Hi, I'm Mike Hamilton. I'm over here at Fowler Toyota, Norman, Oklahoma. Hello, everybody, again. Uh, you could also find me in many places. My website is Oklahoma's Car and Truck Buyers Club. Uh, OKCTclub.com is the website. I'm on Hammy One TV on Instagram. I'm at Hammy One TV also. LinkedIn is Mike Hamilton and Facebook, Michael Hamilton. My Facebook, Facebook group is Car Dash Truck Buyers Club and more. And today I'm going to go over not getting ripped off at the dealer. And it's not what you think. I'm not talking about being ripped off um, by uh, the dealership. There's also doing your due diligence on that part and making sure that uh, uh, you're getting a fair deal on each of the vehicles you buy. But uh, there is a lot of money being spent by going on long-term loans, um, not having uh, the best credit. And so these are all these things I want to discuss with you um, on how to save money and, and, and not pay an exorbitant amount of interest and too much for your uh, vehicle um, by looking at a lot of different factors. And so I got a bunch of things written down here, um, too much stuff for me to remember off the top of my head. Uh, so going to uh, Google, Google is our mother. Um, she doesn't lie. And I got this information from CNBC on uh, basically from one year ago of uh, loan amounts, terms of those loans, um, interest rates, um, also the um, month, average monthly payment and the average interest paid on a loan over that term. Um, so uh, normal average loaned amount as of July of last year was just under $33,000. Um, the average interest rate was 6.03%. Um, the uh, average term of the loan was 70 months, so basically a six-year loan almost. Um, average payment was 544 a month, and that average uh, loan cost in interest $6,168. That's a lot of money to pay. Uh, I got customers every day haggling over a few hundred dollars um, up to a couple thousand dollars and then they turn around and take a long-term loan that costs them many thousands of dollars of interest um, but, so i got some numbers written down here um, here's where i would say doing your due diligence and finding uh, vehicles that you like that you'd be happy with that you qualify for uh, the manufacturer's incentivized rates. Now, normally a manufacturer has so much money off or an interest rate that's uh, incentivized. Usually incentivized rates are uh, starting about tier three through tier one and tier one plus. Um, there's many Toyota loans right now that have zero for 60 months. Um, I particularly think uh, any loan above 60 months is wasting money. Uh, that's usually the 60 month term is gonna give you your best rates. Um, typically either from the bank, a, a credit union, or through the uh, manufacturer himself who is the, the bank themselves. Um, so if we looked at that same amount of money loaned on a uh, on 60 months, $33,000 being the average amount, if you paid 0%, the payment is $550 a month, which is only $6 more a month. Um, then the uh, 544 on the six year term. Um, and that costs you no money in interest at all, zero dollars in interest. Just going up to a still a very, very aggressive, great rate that most people are very happy to get, 1.99%, uh, moves that payment to 578. Uh, and then it costs you $1,696 off, uh, or what's $1,696 of interest. Uh, typically, from what the uh, manufacturers and what the store advertise, you're not going to find that much money off a vehicle once you get to the store. Uh, that's going to be extremely rare in, in any circumstance to get that kind of money off of what an advertised price is. Uh, so just getting the, a 199 is typically uh, costing you more money than it would to be if you were on a uh, uh, 
a zero percent loan um, and also the money you're trying to negotiate off a vehicle. Um, going to 299 a month makes your payment 592 at 60 months, costs you 2569 in interest. Going to 399, which is still uh, considered a good rate for most buyers, at 60 months puts your payment at 608 and cost you three thousand four hundred and fifty six dollars in interest if you make equal payments over the 60 month term um, going to 499 which is still a decent rate um, cost it will make your payment 622 a month at 60 months cost you four thousand three fifty six all still below the average of six thousand one hundred and sixty eight dollars of interest paid on a loan now that's if you make the long term every payment now it, it actually is slightly lower than that because most people do pay off a little early um, at so the, that is five thousand and thirty eight dollars so all these interest rates cost you uh, thousands of dollars of your hard-earned money um, and that's where I say you're ripping yourself off uh, getting an interest rate that's uh, not uh, the premier interest rate now that this video is made today on September 8th 2020 interest rates are fluctuating all the time but uh, if you don't get an incentivized rate if from the manufacturer if you take their uh, their cash offer and you find a, a really good rate out there from a credit union uh, some credit unions have rates in the high twos right now uh, so if you take that money combined plus that interest rate uh, I mean you're you're saving yourself a ton of money I always recommend doing that um, I want to go over uh, why people always have uh, uh, things they look at as far as like I only want a $300 payment I only want a $400 payment I can't afford more than a $400 payment I can't afford more than a $500 payment etc um, so that's the uh, uh, I hear this just like every time everybody has a payment goal everybody's what I call the kitchen table budget they sit down and they go over what they feel they could afford what's comfortable for them personally the way I've been taught to buy a car is at 60 months uh, putting a large chunk down if I'm doing a term um, I like to lease new and buy used uh, reason why is because of the depreciation of vehicle that's another factor of money that's ripping you off uh, depreciation on a uh, today now is is huge um, depreciation on on a uh, vehicle that uh, gets traded in before uh, after before or after is paid off uh, um, or sorry not depreciation that's uh, that's a different thing but the vehicle is going to lose value uh, but negative equity, negative equity is what I'm talking about. Negative equity is what the uh, uh, customer trades in a vehicle before it's paid off. That negative equity typically averages now, um, that's throughout the, all the manufacturers. I don't see this to be as that high with Toyotas, but uh, the uh, average is $5,000 now. So now we got uh, 6,000 in interest, $5,000 in negative equity. Uh, and of course, you wouldn't pay all that interest if you traded in early. A um, couple of years in a row, we, uh, we had the Toyota Banker, my prior store in California. Um, uh, he was going over how to lease and, and get more into leases. And I'm not really here on this video to go over leases. I'm going to talk about it uh, briefly, but the uh, uh, it was kind of really eye-opening for me when I was looking at uh, uh, what he was bringing up that the uh, the average 72 month loan that Toyota uh, wrote for loans in that part of California that vehicle was only kept to 37 months which is really similar to a lease which typically runs 36 month terms on most leases um, and people were trading these things in and if you didn't put it large down you're going to come out of out of that vehicle with negative equity with no doubt and according to the uh, what the average negative equity is out there um, you're looking at five thousand dollars so you have uh, probably a good ten thousand dollars over the life of this loan that you're losing from interest and negative equity uh, so this is where I say uh, Google is our mother uh, I just went over some of the stuff and, and this is if the shoe fits um, but 
all of us are doing some of this or part of this or all of this. Uh, so I just went over our household average expenses of things um, that I know I could cut out or cut a lot of it out or cut half of it out or cut a quarter of it out so I could afford a hundred dollars more a month or hundred fifty dollars more a month to get myself in a term that's going to put me in a position to where I don't spend a ton of money on interest and a ton of money on negative uh, on negative equity so the uh, household average expenses eating out a year is three thousand dollars three thousand dollars a year okay the average uh, consumption of coffee a year this is per person too so if this is a couple this is double you double this so coffee or energy drinks is for one thousand four hundred ten dollars a year women are much higher at this about twenty two hundred dollars a year men are much lower than this but this is the average of fourteen hundred ten dollars a year per person um, so that would be higher if it's a couple fast food twelve hundred dollars a year uh, our cell phone bills now some of that's a necessity but you know, of course, we got to have the nicest iPhone 11X and uh, Pixel 4, you know, and everything else yeah, that we want. And those have, you know, lease payments on them and contracts. Um, but that's $1,368 a year. Um, that's lower than my cell phone bill. That's only $114 a month. I'm paying more than that. Cable, satellite, internet, $2,600 a year. Uh, turning up your thermostat, three to four degrees. Um, either for heat or for uh, cooling down would save you $400 a year. So uh, again, the true fits, you're looking at $731 a month in paying for these things, paying for those things that you don't see really, because you don't see it all in one big bill like you do a car bill. Like when you get your invoice in the mail from the bank and it says, five hundred ninety eight dollars and twenty two cents it's big it's huge but you just spend more money on that stuff right there uh in, a, in an average month uh and you're going to say though oh, well that's luxury items fine and all that if you but you choose to pay uh take uh longer term loans stretch them out to 84 months uh, and and that's six thousand dollars a month is even way more than that when we get to the max terms that uh, most uh, vehicles could qualify for to the 84 month term. Now I'm hearing like some of these really expensive Ford pickups and they got 96 months loans. I know exotics, that's a whole different ball of wax there, have 120 month loans. Uh, but we have all these, uh, all this money going to interest, all this, all this money that's getting wasted. Now, of course, we want to get a great deal with our vehicle, a good deal, a fair deal. Um, I always look at when the sales happen. Luckily, I'm in this business, so I get to know when when stuff is happening. Uh, just knowing your model that you're interested in. When is the end of the model year for this vehicle? When is the sales events? Okay, we got uh, a few big sales events a year that are typical of all manufacturers. We have Memorial Day, okay, it's 4th of July, Labor Day, Black Friday, and that's actually the whole week and the end of the year. Uh, unfortunately, end of the year doesn't mean that's when the model year's end. End of the year with a Corolla, less this COVID year is usually around May. So if you're looking for to get into a Corolla with a great deal, uh, paying a, a little amount of money off on this vehicle, we're gonna look at uh, probably looking in April, March uh, for the last of that model year. So. 2020 was ending um, usually in in May, March, uh, April for these vehicles. Um, going into the Camry model year, usually around July will be the end of the model year. You're always going to get the best rebates and manufacturer discounts um, from them during those times of year. And now there's two types of discounts. There's the store discount and the manufacturer's incentives. Incentives usually climb to their maximum within their last two months of the production run going into the next model year. The particularly really, really, really good time to buy a vehicle um, is when it's the end of a model generation. We just had that happen with uh, the 2019 Highlanders end it uh, a year before that. The uh, uh, We had 2018 RAV4s end it. When there's a major makeover of the vehicle, 
the end of those models will have the biggest discounts and then the same thing when we had the Avalon in 2018 ended uh, that was the most money I've seen with Toyota and I know manufacturers like Ford Ram Dodge they have a lot of money off and it's what the reason why is they, they don't do what Toyota does Toyota ha has one sell one earn one so they don't build one until one sold versus other manufacturers build a ton of vehicles and then put them out on the flood the market with them, put them at the dealership, says go sell them. Then they have to massively rebate them um, to get them moved. And that, a lot of that money, when you see ten, fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 off some points, uh, uh, that's coming from the manufacturer to move these things out because they want to get the new model years in. Uh, all that did is for all the buyers that bought before that tank their values of their vehicles. That's why Toyotas have such great resales. That's why Honda has great resales. That's why Subaru has such great resales. The Japanese way of, of, of marketing and building, they, they both, all three of those companies do that uh, sell one, earn one type thing. They don't overproduce, they don't overbuild. That's why a Tundra still is just absolutely insane in its resale, although it's fallen greatly behind in the amenities and technology of what's going on with all the other big domestic vehicles and all the capabilities is because they don't they don't flood the market with these things uh, that's the thing to look at too so okay you can go get the uh, new ford and oh it's got a little better fuel mileage it saves you two thousand dollars over five years but take that ton it's worth twelve thousand dollars more at the end of that five years and then that costs you ten thousand more dollars to own that f-150 when it's comparable vehicles uh, because of the of the way they have market it and done their business so that's things to look at so um uh going in back into this here just uh looking for your your best incentivized rates um looking at what the manufacturer is doing doing the math making seeing if it's better to take the money or take the uh, uh the loan from them if you have a great credit um then you might take the cash and then find a good rate from a, a credit union. Knowing what your FICO score is very important. Uh, I've seen customers that cost them, you know, several uh, points of interest just based off of uh, like just extending themselves on credit cards. Again, that's ripping yourself off. You get a 640, 630 score because you're extended on cards that are not even that much money. Uh, banks want to see about 60% available on your cards. Um, that could, you know, if you have three or four credit cards that are even not that much money, a $2,000 credit card, a $1,000 credit card, and it's maxed out, it could drag your score down into the 620s. I even see one lady one time, uh, it paid everything on time, made good money, and she was like a 590 based off of uh, being basically extended on all, all her uh, revolving debt. Uh, and that like significantly hurt her. A 590 score is considered a, a, a subprime uh, buyer and getting some prime rates when she paid everything on time. She had no negative on her credit report. She just had a bunch of cards that were extending herself and that put her in a bad position for buying a car. So looking and making sure your uh, revolving debt is, is good, especially especially your credit cards, not extending them out if you can. Uh, getting those things paid down to where at least there's a 60% available balance is going to uh, save you money and in interest. Uh, looking at um, if you're a buyer that usually likes a car every three to five years, maybe you're a, a candidate to lease. And, and don't tell me I drive too many miles. There's leases that go up to 100,000 miles in, uh, and you could go up to 50,000 miles a year with certain banks. Uh, they're, uh, it, the great thing about a lease, uh, and I lease right now, is that I get a lower payment by probably 250 to $300 a month. Uh, I'm going to come out of this vehicle at three years old, and I'm not going to have any negative equity. You won't do that with a, uh, a purchase. You're going to come out of that vehicle in negative equity, and on an average of about five thousand uh, dollars. So, looking at that, looking at your interest rate, looking at uh, 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 being a lease uh, lease buyer. Uh, if if you're uh, um, liking vehicles all the time, the the statistics say you do. Uh, the statistics show you do. The statistics say that 72 month loans are being traded in at 37 months. Uh, we like new things. We like uh, great things, and so that's something I would suggest. And that's why I was going to go into it, but not on a on a huge uh, amount. Um, uh, and just like again, going over uh, your monthly expenses, looking at all these things that you're doing uh, with your uh, what you're spending, and find out what you're spending. See if you can't 
cut back a little bit in each of some of these areas and, and take that learnt term down to at least a 60 month term usually 36 to 60 is the same amount of uh, interest rate so you're going to get your prime interest rate at those terms and that and that's usually regardless of the uh uh, of the credit score unless you're a super subprime uh, buyer you're going to get the the best interest rate term from either the manufacturer who's the bank or the bank that you're using or the credit you're using at the 60-month term um, so that's what i recommend find where you get you know i it, you could go from 400 to 550 and take that payment uh, because there's money out there that you're spending on those Starbucks every day and there's money out there and going out to lunch three times a week through the drive through and going out and eating every Friday and Saturday night and, and, and doing that. The cutting just like one day a week out will cover all that stuff for you, um, turning up that thermostat. So I'm not here to be a financial advisor for you, but uh, just looking at all these things and just learning how to buy a car right. Um, I always say, you know, pay your... Uh, your fees up front don't put that into the finance and finance fees here in Oklahoma it's just the dock fee and the government fee so at my store it's 409 that very store to store California you, they, they, you have to pay your taxes in a purchase uh, DMV is a much higher um, you know have that I when I was in California I paid my taxes I paid my DMV fees I didn't finance any of that stuff you know so I put a large amount down and then plus I put money towards the principal amount of the vehicle down um, and I had to turn around and uh, get out of my uh, I bought again I said I buy used and, and lease new because I don't want to take that big hit the first time around um, and this is a way not to take that hit but like when I got this uh, 2016 uh, Chevy Colorado Z71 trail bots edition and, and midnight oh I love that truck and, and then I bought a travel trailer and it just wasn't capable of towing the thing correctly it was it was scaring me and I needed to get something that had V8 power uh, and so I ended up uh, trading that into to my sister's store and I did lose sixteen hundred dollars but I didn't lose sixteen hundred dollars uh, um, as much as I would have lost if I didn't have a good down payment and didn't put the right amount down for this vehicle and buy this thing too, right? I bought this thing, um, I did a lot of research, looked around, uh, there wasn't very many of these out there, but I did buy it uh, at a pretty good aggressive price. I did a little homework, um, going out there and doing a little shopping. Uh, that was one of the things I was looking at. So I have a customer right now that's looking at buying a, uh, a Tundra uh, payment. It's just not affordable for them at the uh, even at the sales price, it's a fifty thousand dollar truck. Uh, with the discounts and manufacturer rebates, we're going to give them about five thousand dollars off. Uh, that, that payment's just is too much of a payment for him to uh, to buy it off. But uh, and then was, he asked if we had anything used, and um, we do have one used. It's uh, it's a seventeen. It's the same package. It's a TSS. Uh, 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 package uh, TSS off-road package um, it's all blacked out really killer truck it's about thirty seven thousand dollars and so you know if you're looking at something there that's there's a good way right there do you need the negative uh, negative equity in the in the depreciation of that truck so so thirty seven thousand dollars still put them at about a five hundred eighty dollar month payment still too much but guess what this truck has uh, really good manufacturers incentives and leases extremely well and he has about five thousand dollars put down and he's probably going to see a payment with five thousand dollars down of like three hundred dollars a month or less so so he's just absolutely jazzed that he can get the truck he wants um, with the down payment that's affordable and then get a payment way under what he was uh, going to max cap himself out he was looking at six hundred dollars a month uh, and now he's looking at man I could be three hundred dollars a month maybe even in the 200s but we're looking at a little bit long longer mile each lease on him he's driving about twenty mile, thousand miles a year uh typical leases are run at, at uh, 10 12 and fifteen thousand mile per year leases um so this is something that uh we got to look at it. so it's going to bring up the the dollars per month a little bit buying the miles up front is 10 cents a mile but guess what he's going to get this incredible great truck that he wants the in the package he wants 
at an affordable price that he could uh, afford um, by looking at some of the other ways and options. And then he's not going to come out of this thing three years later with negative equity. And he could turn this in and release or purchase another vehicle. He could buy it out and buy it out for its residual. Usually it's set at wholesale cost. So that's usually a really good deal. And then continue to pay it off and make a lower payment. Um, or he could just turn in and walk away and go get a Ford or Chevy or anything else that he may want in three years from now. But at least that gives him the options. Uh, and that puts him in a payment that that's uh, way under what he was thinking. Uh, and then you know, so if he could afford 600, now he gets 300. He could stuff 300 away, have a big down payment by the time this comes around in three years, and, and just have a little payment to pay that thing off and own that vehicle. If that's what he wants to do. He's had his last tender for since 2014, so that's six years. He just paid it off, and so um, he just kind of had a little sticker shock of what these things have gone to, but car industry is the cars gone up like kind of astronomically some of it's a uh, profit margins that the manufacturers are doing some of it has a lot to do with what's going on with the uh, what the federal government's requirement requiring in these vehicles for safety equipment now uh, there's adaptive cruise control and smart stop and all these cameras and, and uh, they could more airbags and rollover protection that these roofs won't crush in uh, the, the uh, blind spot monitors it goes on and on and on but I would say right now with a lot of stuff that Toyota's put in these vehicles we have like three to five thousand dollars worth of additional equipment in these vehicles over the last two to three years with Toyota Safety Sense and that's a uh, um, going to save your life and keep you from being hurt, um, stuff that's really good for you, but definitely it's going to bring up the price. Um, also, the cost of manufacturing and things have gone up, and uh, there's parts or things and labor and all that stuff is going up uh, kind of significantly over over the last uh, few years. Uh, so that's what I've been looking at, and that's why, again, I think there, there's options to look at. Well, how am I going to maximize my dollars? Uh, by finding a way to get myself into a, a, a lower payment with, um, or lower out of pocket, lower depreciation, lower uh, overall costs and other things like that. So again, I'm Mike Hamilton. You could find me over here at Fowler Toyota, Norman, Oklahoma. My website is Oklahoma's Car and Tuck Buyers Club, okctclub.com. Uh, my Facebook group is Car Dash Truck Buyers Club and more. Uh, you can find me at LinkedIn at Mike Hamilton, regular Facebook at Michael Hamilton, YouTube is Hammy1TV, and also on Instagram is Hammy1TV. Thank you for watching this. You folks have a nice day.